Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be deadheading uh, some of my annuals and perennials that I've planted in the last couple weeks and fertilizing them at the same time. I'm just using some of this uh, flower tone from Espoma. You use whatever fertilizer uh, you want to use. I do like using organic fertilizers because um, I'm just trying to feed the soil and let the soil feed the plants. I planted everything that I'm showing you in a little bit of compost and some pine bark. And plus I've had mulch here now for uh, close to a year and a half that's been breaking down. So a lot of organic material plus the organic fertilizer should be good to go. I fertilized all my trees and shrubs maybe two months ago and there's a video for that. But all of these annuals and perennials that I've been planting recently have not been fertilized. Before I fertilize them, I'm gonna go through and deadhead some of them. Uh, let me show you why. I think you can see on this Angelonia, which has a beautiful uh, cluster of flowers here, up here on the top, that it's just one skinny uh, piece here. If I come under this flower and take this off, it has spots on the side of this entire plant that are gonna branch out. And each of those it is gonna have a flower cluster on its terminal end. So by taking this top one off, I'm encouraging all of these side shoots to get going. And I know this is hard and a lot of people don't like to, uh, probably don't want to do this, but I promise you, you know, you're trying to get as many flowers uh, out of these as you can for the summer. And if you'll go through uh, after you plant, I don't do this the day I plant. I typically will leave them here for a week or two, let them start to get rooted in a little bit. Um, maybe just, maybe just a few days, let them get rooted in a little bit. And then I'll just go under the top of the, uh, the flower cluster. Uh, like that and this is just a little pair of a uh, little pair of snips and i'll just go you know, again right under the top flowers there and then i'm going to come through here and uh, fertilize these and uh, that'll just get them to get them to jump up really quickly spread out so the next time they start blooming they're going to be more like this wide rather than that single little piece coming up this will this flower cluster will fade and then new shoots will come on the side but if you go ahead and just take it off like I just did, you can get, uh, normally what will happen is that one will die and then like three will take its place. By taking it off, I'm gonna force almost all of these pieces at one time. And when they come back into bloom, uh, there'll be six, eight, 10 uh, clusters of flowers. There's pretty much no difference on any of your annuals. These pentas, same thing. I got this uh, first flower here, but you can see right below it, it branches. And it not only branches there, it branches several times down lower on the plant. And so by taking this one flower cluster off, also the other, the other thing that I didn't say on those Angelonia is uh, this plant's trying to root in, establish itself at the exact same time it's throwing up this flower. By taking, this, um, by taking these flowers off, I am relieving some of that work that it's doing. And hopefully it's putting, it will put more effort into uh, into the rooting but again pentas exactly the same as that angelonia this is some patio sky blue salvia and you can see what it's trying to do here is just put up one single one single piece of growth uh one single stalk and uh, flowers are starting to form on the very top of this one but i want all of this growth down here at the bottom i want to get it to catch up so on these uh long before they even start blooming i'm just going to come through here and cut them all down to about the same height and that will force all of that lower growth up. And then when they come into bloom in a couple of weeks, they'll all be uniform. They'll all have way more flowers than they would have with just having that one single stalk. Uh, and uh, it'll quickly fill this in. See, I've got weeds in here. And uh, part of my weed suppression for this bed will be these plants uh, being of some size. And so uh, making them wider as fast as I can is a good idea. This is really easy to see with Celosia. You can see all the where all these uh, other flower spikes are originating down here lower on the plant. I just want to slow, slow the top part down and uh, let all that catch up. And you can see I'm going to go from one little flower spike up on the top to seven or eight uh, when, it, when it flushes back out. It'll take a week or week and a half for that to happen. But when it does, it's going to be a much, much showier plant. Uh, this is a great example of it here. You can see on uh, Celosia really shows you uh, where all the potential is. Uh, down lower on it and again I'll just take the top off just like that uh, quick and easy. I probably have 50 dahlias uh, in the garden and these are going to bloom all summer long and uh, initially I'll get this single stalk that will come up and I'll get two or three flower buds here. These flowers are going to be small. These plants have not established themselves in the ground long enough for these flowers to really be impressive 
And so what I'm going to do is slow them down, which will have the do several things. The, the plant will branch, and the more it branches, the more ends, um, the, you know, the flowers occur on the end of branches. So the more branches I have, the more flowers I'm going to have. And by just slowing it down, allowing it to root a little longer, establish itself a little longer, uh, the flowers that come in a couple weeks uh, from the result of this pruning are going to be much larger. I got another one uh, right here. That uh, the plant's looking great. Plants come up. It's um, I started these early uh, in a video. Got them in the ground a week or so ago. They've really put on some growth very quickly. And again, right up here at the very top, uh, they're trying to flower. And I'm going to take that off initially because I want these to flower well into October this year. So I'm not worried about that first flower here at the uh, in the middle of May. Last example before I fertilize is this lantana, and I'll come right behind the flowers here and uh, and take them off and right down there to the next leaf bud. This is a plant, this is a perennial for me. Uh, it's gonna bloom all summer long and I want it to fill this entire space. And so it wasting energy on these first two, three, four flowers uh, is not what I'm looking for. I want it to fill this space and then it's gonna bloom from June until October in this space. I've gone around and uh, deadheaded the things I wanted to deadhead back here. The things I'm deadheading are the things that bloom all summer long. I'm not taking flowers off things that are only spring flowering things or early summer flowering things. So you kind of need to know what you have a little bit. Uh, the uh, the uh, Angelonia, things like Vincas, Salvias, the Pintas, uh, any, any annuals you're buying that bloom all summer long. Those are the things we're talking about that you can deadhead. It wouldn't make sense to deadhead something that's only going to bloom a few weeks. Uh, anyway, uh, so you kind of know what you have to have a little bit. I mean, the dahlias bloom all summer long. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to prepare them to get the biggest, biggest show I can possibly get out of them. I'm also trying to get these plants wider and cover some of this ground space uh, as quick as possible as well. A couple notes on the fertilizer. Um, I'm using this granular fertilizer. Uh, I get, you'll see a little bit of dust in the air. The camera is really good at picking up the dust that comes off this fertilizer. I'm not really wasting any fertilizer. This is a granular fertilizer that happens to have a little bit of dust on it. And so when I throw it, it appears that I'm losing all the fertilizer. And so I get that comment when people see this. Uh, also, uh, I do uh, wear a mask. I didn't in one video and you know, it looked bad. The camera honestly makes this look way worse than it actually is uh, in person for some reason. Uh, but again, I'm just taking, you know, I take a small, a small amount, a small handful and just broadcast it uh, at the flowering things. If you want to, on this flower fertilizer, you can come back in the summer and do a second application. Uh, of course, there's lots of other fertilizer choices out there, but I just basically um, put a small coating uh, around uh, each of the uh, flowering things that I'm trying to fertilize. I've got a yard full of things to go around and do, but uh, it's really, here's that salvia on this side, just boom. With an organic fertilizer, it doesn't matter as much uh, that I'm overthrowing onto the lawn a little bit or uh, onto the paths and that kind of thing. It just, it's not really gonna burn anything unless you went absolutely crazy with it. Uh, but you just follow the directions uh, on the bag. It's simple, quick, and easy. Wear a mask, wear some gloves, because it's pretty smelly. An absolutely crazy amount of annuals and perennials for pollinators have been added to this landscape over the last month. So uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and uh, hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload a video so you can follow along with the progress uh, during this season. Thanks for watching.